Welcome to Stacked, the show about what should be in the modern day freight tech stack of the freight market. But before we get into today's topic, the role of digital tools in making freight brokers win, we need to make sure we know a little bit about you, Lindsay, your background, and the company you were working at today, Parade. Well, hey, Adam, thanks for letting me be here. It's awesome. Great to be on the show. Um, a little bit about me. So I'm the head of product of Parade. Parade is the leading capacity management platform out there for freight brokers. We help you better understand all your carriers and book all your freight digitally. Um, really changing the game for a lot of folks and look forward to talking about how that plays and some of the stuff today. You know, prior to being on the, to joining Parade, I spent some time at Convoy, helping them launch uh, Convoy's TMS, Convoy Connect. And prior to that, I was at Amazon for several years, working on a lot of interesting projects like uh, sidewalk robots and checkout with store. So uh, really love being in freight tech. It's fun to take some of the, uh, the, the tech skills I learned elsewhere and, and bring them to one of the most interesting industries out there. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting time uh, in freight tech. You know, when I got my start in the industry about a decade ago, uh, the biggest innovation out there was probably an integration between an ERP and a TMS. And a lot of folks were focused on EDI still. It was a very, you know, archaic industry. Um, and even today, we, we want to think, and maybe it's because it's a function of our job, that more freight participants are using more freight tech today. But you know, in the last two or three years, we've seen an infusion of cash from venture capital. We've seen traditional big freight brokers, regardless of their model, being gobbled up by private equity companies. And so obviously there's a lot of potential and opportunity economically to help this industry root out waste and become more efficient. And I think that's why, you know, we're seeing this explosion of freight tech tools in the industry, especially in this movement called the digital freight broker. So why are we continually talking about this? What are the reasons that we see more upstarts like Parade or even Sonar with our data and analytics platform start developing tools for the, the modern day freight broker? Oh man, uh, I, think, I think Freight's at the, at the nexus of so many interesting mega trends that are happening right now, right? So if you think about it, well, let's go through a couple ideas, right? The ubiquity of the smartphone, that, that changed a ton of stuff in our industry, right? Where suddenly you could now reach every carrier brokers could easily communicate with their with all the carriers shippers can get in touch with the brokers just uh, incredibly easy right? so there's just been an explosion in the ability to communicate and that's just that's just opened up new doors right new opportunities um, combine that then with like the rise of cloud computing and ai and we've got a whole bunch of interesting things and some of it's hype like i think we everyone's heard about ai replacing everything but there's a lot of really fascinating like little things that you can do with that that they compound over time and you know as a freight broker you wake up one day and you realize oh my gosh like the world has changed and so there's a lot of a lot of interesting interesting things happening right now well you know it really reminds me as a professional in marketing you know around 2010 we saw this explosion of new tools and this new phrase called digital marketing and i think 10 years later that digital moniker has kind of really gone by the wayside and it's really just how you market today and you know I know when I started seeing things like email automation or CRM or things like a HubSpot where you have a content management system or developing a website where you can easily edit it with, you know, builder tools like an Elementor on a website, you know, it took a long while to really start sifting through what should belong in my freight tech stack, which tools should I use? And I think there might be an interesting parallel between, you know, marketing professionals and the freight brokerage world. So how should freight brokers, in your opinion, really start looking at these tools and what to put in their tech stack? Well, let's go, let's go back in time to, to 2010 when you're trying to figure out what's next for you, right? My guess is, my guess is when you see this explosion of all these things in front of you, the question becomes, well, where do I want to place my bets? Like, well, like well, I've only got so, you know, so much time in the day, what do I want to do? And the, one of the frameworks I've seen a lot of folks use is at first it's like, hey, what, what can I do that's similar to what I could do before, but maybe now I can just do it faster or better or cheaper, right? Like maybe updating marketing content for you back in 10 years ago might've been that. Just, you know what? We can just turn the content faster so it looks fresher and that that get, that helps us win, right? But then there's another opportunity that probably came along for you, which was, oh, actually we can do something completely different now, right? Like there's something that we could just never do before. So uh, in marketing land, that might've been like, personalizing ads or content for every single person you talk to, right? 
And so those are both opportunities that sat in front of you. And, and like, there's this plethora of stuff in front of you, right? What do you, what do you choose to do? And one way I've seen people sift through this is just doing stuff faster, better, cheaper versus doing something entirely new. And it's the stuff that's entirely new that really changes the game for you in a sustainable way, right? Everything's going to change the game, but how do you, how do you capture that advantage that's long lasting and durable? Well, it reminds me of all the way back in 2004. I had my first big job out of college and it was at a startup actually in the PEO, the professional employer organization space. And at that time, you know, there was no Affordable Care Act. There was no um, protections against your insurance rates being high if you had a pre-existing condition. And if you think about the real estate agent who's largely maybe an independent uh, professional or has a small company, uh, it was very difficult, you know, with the average successful real estate agent being 55 years old to get really affordable health insurance. And these were very successful real estate agents. But when you're spending for your family of four, four grand a month in insurance, because you happen to be born with something you could not help having, mm -hmm. it was really unaffordable. And so from a marketing perspective, we use digital tools like online forms to streamline the process. We had to create servers and get the list of emails from the real estate folks to send out effective communications and reach them more easily. And at that time, that was some wizardry stuff, but it really meant a lot to our business, right? We were able to reach our audience, allow them to be onboarded quickly through those online forms and just make it more efficient for them to get affordable healthcare. Because for us, if we didn't capture all those people really quickly, we wouldn't have had a big enough group in order to make that health insurance math really work out. And so I think that's what we're seeing with freight brokers, right? And they have to think about maybe their business model, how they're going to market, maybe you know what they're doing in way of gaining revenue and increasing profits. So what are some things you know that are possible with some of these new technology and what should maybe digital freight brokers really be thinking about in applying technology? Totally, totally, love it. And I think, you know, let's let's try and use that idea of, of what's doing stuff faster versus doing stuff that we could never do before, right? And so let me, let me, let me throw two examples of, of things that I've seen. There's, there's lots of them, but just two that I've seen recently of, of companies that are doing things that just weren't possible before we had this like deep, deep tech stack for brokers, right? So, you know, um, I think what Leaf Logistics is doing is kind of interesting where they're, they're building a contract market for freight, right? That wasn't possible six, seven years ago. Couldn't do that right now. Will it take off? I, I don't know. I, it, like the, ju the jury's out, but it's, it's very interesting and, you know, it could revolutionize the industry if it works. And so that to me is an example of like, there's something brand new that, 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 that wasn't possible until the internet came along. And, and now it is right. Uh, it hit parade tech like a storm. And I think what we do at parade as well, right? Like we're, we're really focused on uh, digital bookings and helping, helping you understand your carrier base and then book them digitally end to end. So you can be way more efficient, right? And that's a step change in efficiency. It's not an incremental change. And that, that wasn't possible until we had all of this technology, the cloud computing, the smartphones, the AI machine learning, et cetera. And so there's, there's new things happening that are places where you as a freight broker can invest and create a, a disproportionate advantage for yourself if you can get ahead of that curve. Well, yeah, and that's really where the rubber meets the road, right? We're talking about dollars and investments. And it's one thing to say, oh, there's a lot of cool tools out there. But it's another thing to actually, you know, evaluate each solution, understand its purpose, set the right expectations, onboard and implement it successfully, and then actually get your folks to use it. And so for me, you know, I don't know if 10 years ago I would have been comfortable spending 50 grand to 70 grand on a Salesforce and Salesforce marketing cloud instance. But today it's almost, that's peanuts because of the ROI, the power, the capability, you know, and it's very important that we start looking at, okay, what is in my tech stack, whether it's a CRM or a content management system, um, some sort of platform to manage my advertising, social media management tools like a Buffer or a Hootsuite or something through HubSpot. And so I'm really starting to see this really mature, sophisticated tech stack that I need to implement to be a successful marketer. And I have an idea of what those dollars can do for me when I invest in it. So how should digital freight brokers make that a same evaluation? What, what dollars should they be investing into what potential technologies that might go into that freight tech stack? 
Cool. That this is this is a big question. So let's let's unpack this because this is an onion we can peel for a while, right? Yeah. Let's let's think maybe first about what what is the tech stack, right? What's involved? And so so the way I think of the tech stack is that you can look across the life cycle of a shipment, right? You can start with uh, you you there's there's a load that you you hear about and you go all the way back to payment, right? And if you go across there, there's there's a ton of different things that has to get accomplished. You've got to you've got to figure out. Um, how to figure out what rate you want to put it at. You've got to do figure out what you've got capacity. You've got to onboard carriers potentially. You might have to go find capacity through like a load board. You have to do tracking visibility. There's payment. These are all different layers of the tech stack. And there are folks investing in new solutions um, in each of those, right? And it gets, it, it can frankly can become really complex for, for, a, uh, for a freight broker because you've got all these different layers you got to figure out where you want to be, like where, which is the one where you're going to create durable advantage for your particular brokerage. And all brokerages are different, right? Everyone's got a, a different plan, different focus. Um, and then you got to figure out, do I want to partner with my TMS provider to do this? Or do I want to go with the new entrant who works on top of my TMS? And so these are, these are a lot of the issues that I see every freight broker wrestling with. Where in the stack do I want to play? How do I get into the stack? And then the third one that you mentioned is how do I think about ROI, right? How do I figure out what this is actually is actually going to do for my business? Because the, the dollars matter, right? And to your point. Well, you know, I know as an example, um, in order to track that ROI, you first have to understand what are the benchmarks that I have in place right now? You know, and one of the things that I largely will first do, whether it was at my, you know, prior company or today as a marketer, I look at things like analytics, reports, and tools to help me kind of develop this. This is where I am now. I'm going to invest in this, and this is where I was afterward. And you have to set all of these different key performance indicators, whether it's new users to a website, or maybe you advertised in LinkedIn and you want to see new conversions from there. And so you need to talk about how you prove the ROI. Do you have any, is, is it, is it, are analytics something that are separate they should use? Should the technology they use already come with analytics? What is the role of the service provider who sells this? Like at Parade, when you guys are trying to yeah. get new customers, are you doing quarterly business reports? Is there something already built in? How do you track that ROI for those customers? Yeah, so I've got I've got a, I've got a pretty strong opinion of ROI and how, how you should think about it. So let me let me offer a couple of thoughts. The first one is is that um, when you're talking ROI, particularly in freight tech. We should definitely be talking dollars, right? And sometimes I will see folks try and offer an ROI, and they'll say something like, um, "Your uh, your carrier reps will be able to do X, Y, Z faster," or something like that. And that's interesting, but unless we can tie that back to gross margin and be like, "Look, I'm going to do this many more loads at this value, and that adds this to my bottom line." It's not ROI, right? So the first thing is, is like when you're thinking ROI, don't confuse an operational metric, like the number of loads you can do with the actual bottom line impact. It's got to come back to the bottom line dollars, right? Second thing is, is when you're talking to one of your one of your vendors or suppliers, if they can't provide you as part of the sales process an ROI assessment, it, it's worth pausing and asking, why can't they do that, right? Like we, probably, we go through a very detailed ROI assessment with all of our, with all of our, our prospects and customers because that's that's the basis of our conversation going forward. It's like, are we actually delivering what we promised? And if we didn't set those expectations of what it was going to be at the start, how do we know how we're doing, right? And then the third thing I'd say is, once you've once you've once you've got that ROI assessment, how do you monitor and improve it, right? So your your comment earlier about the 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 uh, executive business reviews on a quarterly basis. I mean, those are the those are a great mechanism for doing it. Another great way that do I like to see is actually put the data in the product, right? Like show me the value there, show me that it's actually happening so that I as an executive can go, or the, op, the ops manager, et cetera, can go on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and see that. And if it's not aligning with where we want to be, let's get together and have a quick conversation and course correct so we can get back to where we want to be. And so that to me is the benchmark that you as a freight broker should be looking to all your providers to offer you. Yeah, you know, and I think as the digital tools continue to proliferate, and maybe we'll just continue to start saying tools instead of digital, but it might take some time in the freight broker space. We'll get, we'll know, get used to it eventually. Yeah, I think so. And I, and, I, and I think it's incumbent upon us tech providers in the space to really lead freight brokers to their end goal and map that out with them and be very active in those conversations. You know, software as a service. Hey, it says in its name, it's supposed to be 
software as a service. But I think we're largely starting to understand as SaaS based providers in freight, the service extends beyond the software. It's got to come from the people and change management is a big aspect of implementing any new system, whether it's for marketing, finance, or for running your freight broker operations. And at the end of the day, you have to say, is this tool combined with my other tools going to be working together efficiently enough to help me gain revenue, also reduce operating costs in order to not lose profits? But is it also going to make me just a better provider of service to my customers? And when you can do that, then you have that squishy stuff that happens. You say, well, I'm a better service provider. My reputation's better. I'm getting more referrals. People want to do business with me. I'm attracting the top talent because I'm investing in our business. And I think that's largely where we'll start seeing freight brokers start thinking as tech, not in a one-off siloed by department environment, but seeing how maybe one piece of technology can help my entire freight broker operations and how they all work together. And so with that said, you know, it's really important for us to think about with freight brokers or shippers or whether it may be carriers that you sell freight tech to, what's the future look like, right? And, you know, one of the things we always like to do early on in the year, and you see a million articles about it, but it talks about trends. And I think that 2021, and especially with what we saw in the market and the volatility for 2020, it's a great opportunity to say, do I really want to be one of these freight brokers who gets blindsided by something? And I think freight tech can help you see into the future. It can help get you future ready. But what do you think when it comes to freight tech in general for the rest of 2021 that we'll see when it comes to freight brokers making some action in that in their freight tech stack? Totally. So I think I think you nailed it there with the when you when you squint at freight tech, you can see the future and you can understand how that technology is making your people better, right? And that's it's 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 helping you up level the entire team. It's not just about doing more faster. It's about them having new abilities and be able to spend more time with carriers building relationships or shippers building deeper relationships and trying to figure out how to solve their problems rather than a lot of the operational stuff that we get stuck in in freight, which is just like booking freight or trying to get status updates, right? We can make that a lot of that stuff go away and create new things. We get with the team levels up completely, and I think that leads to some predictions for for 2021, right? I think you know two things I'll go on record saying. I think number one in 2021, we're going to see that um, pure play freight tech, like the best of breed in each level of the stack, out competes suites. Or it's like there are folks who are saying like, hey, you know what? Spread your take take your dollars, invest with me. You can get four different tools for the price of one. And I think what we're going to learn very quickly is that the brokers who take the best of breed at every layer of the stack are going to build better, more durable relationships with their carriers and their shippers than those who kind of peanut butter spread it across the entire stack. So that's that's one thing that I, I see. The other thing I think that's going to happen as well, talking with your mention on relationships, is that 2021 is going to be the year where we see some breakout brokers use freight tech to really accelerate their business by building great relationships built on top of technology. So those are, those are, I see, I see some uh, quick moving brokerages who are moving up the ranks really fast because they've adopted technology in a way that lets them get the most out of their team to build those relationships that drive their business forward. So that's, that's exciting stuff for me. Yeah. I mean, it's an exciting time, you know, and I've been very fortunate, you know, my career to come across some of these really forward thinking freight brokers who are really putting everything into technology, but also uh, just at a higher level, uh, a culture of innovation, a culture that is a great culture, right? You know, I know 10 years ago, one of the things that was interesting to me, working at a 3PL, technically, right, a freight broker um, by bond and by license. But one of the things the owners had told me that co-founded the company was, you know, there's a lot of distrust in the freight broker world. And I was like, well, why? And it's because sometimes it's a, you know, boots on the ground sales model. It's a dog eat dog world. And it's just really aggressive. And, you know, shippers aren't always 100% sure that they're dealing with an honest broker. And I think what technology, at least what I see 2021 and moving forward will continue to be a great squishy ROI. And what does that mean? Well, uh, it'll help you improve culture. It'll make you be more innovative, but most importantly, it'll help you be transparent to your end customers or your partners. 
And those people who have a better view because of technology into the processes, and that might be called visibility, or they have a better view into where the actual uh, freight is, and that's another way to call visibility, right? Or maybe they just are able to say, hey, our people are more efficient, and so they're, they're spending more time with customers or working on more strategic initiatives such as helping a new customer spin up a new lane or spin up a whole new market or using you know some tools to find out where's the next dc going to be or using a platform to figure out if this is the right price that i should be paying for something so you don't lose too much on a cost per mile basis and you're able to add your margin at the end of the day you know it's those it's those soft things that we start seeing those brokers who win today really rise in the ranks because I do believe that the market, especially those companies, those big companies like in the CPG, retail or automotive are having their own battles out there. And we all have to thank Amazon for kind of creating this efficient supply chain demand and creating a public awareness in a way that fast shipping, efficient shipping and transparent shipping is something that's here to stay and that's okay. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all trying to use tools to our best advantage. And I think it's an exciting time in the freight broker world. And before I uh, leave you, Lindsay, I'd love for you to kind of speak a little bit more, um, you know, about what Parade's doing and maybe what to expect in 2021 from Parade. Yeah, sure. So so quick overview, if, we, if you think about um, kind of some of the things you just described around like building trust and building deeper relationships, right? One of the ways that I, one of the things I hear from shippers all the time is if my I love it when my brokers are able to to send the same carrier again and again because that helps me them get understand my facilities and helps them just improve service level and that's just a better broker right and that's very difficult for for a broker to do today right doing it manually is very very challenging to spin this to parade one of the things we do is we help drive carrier reuse through automation right and so one of the things we spend a lot of time doing is helping brokers get their carriers again and again used in their network right and that's an example of how our technology helps drive some great outcomes including some of those soft squishy ones you're talking about where now you're actually by reusing your carriers and only you're getting a benefit of the carrier being happy you got the shipper being happy as well right so I, I totally see that happening in 2021 and that's that's some of the stuff we've done when I think about where we're going what we're really interested in is saying okay how can we how can we help our um, all of our brokers use capacity to create their deep knowledge of capacity to keep an unfair advantage, right? So how can you, when you, how can you take those great uh, carrier relationships you've got and use it to do things like win more RFPs? How can you know everything about where your carriers actually go and how can you use that to, to bid better and go win more freight, right? How can, when spot opportunities come across your board, how can you start to understand, okay, where should I be bidding? Uh, versus because now where I know there's capacity versus on just all the lanes that are available to me. So that's a lot of investment you're going to see in from us in Parade is about saying how if you take a capacity first approach to growing your business, what are all the interesting things you can do that were previously impossible? Yeah, there's just so much that goes into transportation procurement, you know, and it really just depends on the type of freight, uh, the type of freight brokerage uh, and their specialty. But then at the end of the day, you know, one, do they have the right data to make the right decision for every single load, whether it, and do they have it very quickly? And then next, how do they execute that? And then how do they realign anything they see after that load to better improve the transportation network? You know, and I think more and more, it's gonna include these digital tools like Parade and others. It's gonna include data and analytics to inform those decisions like we're doing at Sonar. It's gonna take some of these big incumbent um, technology partners, um, you know, to, to, to really start helping integrate some of these other, uh, tools. And I really start seeing, you know, interoperability between a lot of freight tech companies occurring. And we're going to see, you know, TMS partner with visibility as we already have, but then the next, you know, route is, uh, efficiency tools and execution that give you predictive insights. And we're going to see a lot of machine learning, a lot of words like artificial intelligence. And we have seen those words, but I think we're in the era of actual things occurring with those technologies where, you know, a CEO of a freight broker does not need to know how the technology works a hundred percent. They just need to know how does it help me do my job easier. And so, you know, when we, you know, finish out the rest of this year at the end of it, 
do you think that the freight market will be more sophisticated in its tools and where you know do you think we'll end up in 2021 at the end of the year will it be finally folks getting rid of the word digital uh, will it be people using multiple platforms uh, will they abandon their tms what does the end of 2021 look like to you well i hope the word digital is dropped out of our vernacular that's one thing i certainly hope but um you know I, I, I don't think I think everyone's going to have a TMS partner, right? Like let's talk let's talk about the TMS for a sec. Everyone needs a, a store where the transaction resides, right? You need to keep track of the transaction. We can't we can't uh, have the audit chain. We can't settle. We can't we can't run our business if we don't know where things are going. And the TMSs have built a fantastic uh, system for doing that over the last like twenty plus years of innovation that they've done there. And so that's not going away anytime soon. What, what is going to change is the there's we've talked about all these trends that have impacted freight tech and that's resulted in this explosion of new ideas all of which live on top of the TMS and there's been so many new ideas that there's no way a TMS vendor could possibly uh, explore all of them right like it's just it's just not possible with them they have to uh, bankrupt themselves buying engineers and just exploring new things right because um, freight's such a massive massive industry so I think at the end of the year, what you're going to start seeing is you're going to see everyone's still going to have their, their TMS partners. They're, provi they're going to have their preferred pro uh, provider. We're not going to say the word digital, but you're going to have a bunch of folks picking and choosing which parts of the tech stack do they want to get really good at. So some folks, it might be tracking. That might be like load execution might be where they think is really where their particular brokerage is going to nail it. They're going to go invest in that. For other folks, it'll be capacity management with parade where they say, you know what, that's the edge that I can get. Um, and then on top of that, behind the scenes, all of these systems are going to be powered with a little bit of machine learning. There's going to be there's going to be things that happen there that just that just make it work. Um, but we're not going to call it. We're not going to be talking about our machine learning solutions. We're going to be talking about how, you know, um, the emails that come in just get read automatically and become capacity. That's one of the things we do at Parade. Now, is that machine learning in NLP? Yeah, it is. Do do we? To your point, does the CEO care? No, the CEO just wants to know. When I get emails from my carrier saying where things are, guess what? That turns into capacity and I know what it is. Yeah, and us product guys, I'm a product marketer, you're head of product, you know. I think that's one of those things that you and I keep top of mind is that it's easy for marketers and product guys to get down into the weeds. But I always have to remind myself, like, remember, you know the guts of this, but that doesn't mean the end user does. And we have to enter in a bit of pragmatism into the into these things, you know, and I can see in the future, maybe, you know, TMS systems or other type systems of record that like a HubSpot, you, you just have this marketplace and you integrate an app. Like you can integrate GoToWebinar with HubSpot and have your registration forms talk to each other and it's auto magical and it feels, you know, pretty efficient and that's what you want. Or like in Salesforce, when your BD team, your business development team needs to get the right contact information, there's a little module that you can say, is this the right contact information by, bringing in zoom info or you've got ambition going into slack and getting your team all excited about a new sale so i see that interoperability and automation between different apps starting to become one click installations in the near future i'm not sure if we're there quite yet for the end of 2021 but when we start seeing big big companies and you know clubhouse is not going to be a thing until uh you know elon musk got on it on sunday and now all of a sudden it's the biggest social media darling. And I've seen that for the last 10 years. It's celebrities. Are, you, who, are we, are we going to do this show in clubhouse? Uh, we in might hey, if maybe have to switch over our format a little bit as Elon Musk makes everything important, but you know, Twitter, it started with the celebrities taken on board. And I think it's no different in the freight tech stack. When you get a big few players really, you know, using a platform really, really well, and they're bringing in other tools and decision making tools in module or form inside a system of record or something like that it'll just kind of build its own freight tech stack case where you know roi and providers like us become more efficient at proving it we get better at onboarding and implementing we get really good at change management and us product marketers and head of product guys get better at communicating that so uh lindsay before i let you go where can people find you um you know to connect with you and get your thoughts uh after they watch this show or maybe learn more about parade yeah i think the best thing to do is just go to parade.ai and we're all there. Everything's listed there. You can learn more about us, get in contact with me. I love talking free tech. So if folks want to want to go deep, I'm always available. Sounds good. Well, hey, Lindsay, thank you very much for being the first guest 
on the first episode of Stacked, brought to you by FreightWave Sonar, where we talk to freight tech leaders and innovators to speak about what should be included or what shouldn't be maybe in the freight tech stack for the modern freight market participant. Take care.